On today's episode, SpaceX is going to Mars, Blue Origin is not going to Mars, and China's mysterious space plane has just returned to Earth, probably not from Mars. Elon Musk is talking about Mars again, and for the first time in a long time, Elon is dropping his bold predictions on us about how the SpaceX Starship will establish a human presence on Mars within the next four years. So this all started with Bill Ackman, the finance bro. He made a post on X about health. He wrote, let's make America healthy again, which Elon then responded to by writing, SpaceX created the first fully reusable rocket stage, and much more importantly, made the reuse economically viable. Making life multiplanetary is fundamentally a cost per ton to Mars problem, which seemed off topic. Anyway, that led into some more technical information. So right now, it costs around $1 billion to send one ton of mass from the Earth to Mars, which is too expensive, and that needs to improve to $100,000 per ton in order to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. So that's going to require our technology to get around 10,000 times better, which Elon says is extremely difficult, but not impossible. A few minutes later, Elon elaborated on that concept a little further, doubling down one more level of quote post and writing, The first starships to Mars will launch in two years when the next Earth transfer window opens. These will be uncrewed to test the reliability of landing intact on Mars. Okay, so yes, two years is not a very long time from now, and yes, Starship is still having some kinks worked out as of right now, but this shouldn't be particularly surprising. Elon and SpaceX have been pretty open about the idea that as soon as Starship is able to reach Mars, they are going full send. This is the whole reason they've gone through the work of designing and testing and building this rocket. They're not interested in wasting any amount of time. Now, having said that, even though Mars is the primary objective, you might remember that SpaceX has also promised Starship to NASA for the Artemis moon landing, which is also supposed to happen in two years. Can SpaceX do both? It's worth discussing at least. Artemis was always a kind of side quest for Starship. It's a great practical use case that would really help NASA out with their own very ambitious plan to establish a human presence on the moon. As much as people rag on Elon for being overly optimistic, I mean, NASA's Artemis plan isn't exactly the most realistic thing I've ever seen either. But it's reasonable to assume that SpaceX is looking at the Mars landing and the moon landing projects as something that can operate in parallel. I mean, we're talking about two totally different mission profiles. Landing on the moon is nothing like landing on Mars, and the lunar starship has a primary mission to support a crew, while the Mars ships would be purely cargo transports. If anything, the Mars landing hardware should be much easier than the lunar hardware, and probably wouldn't take much away from Artemis. If there even is an Artemis crew landing, I mean, at this point it seems almost equally as questionable as Elon's whole Mars landing. Of course, it's not like Starship doesn't have its own part to play in the Artemis 3 timeline slippage. There has definitely been some progress in the rocket's design over the course of four test flights, and I feel like we really need to see what happens on flight 5 before making any judgments about where Starship is at in its development process. If the next ship comes back down and lands without getting shredded by re-entry, and if the next booster is caught by a robot launch tower without exploding, then I think even the most skeptical voices would have to admit that SpaceX is really on to something here. One inescapable complication that needs to be acknowledged though is just the sheer volume of Starship operations that would be required to send at least two ships to Mars and at least two ships to the moon. That would be one demo landing and one crewed landing for Artemis, all within the next two years. If we keep the number of fuel transfer emissions at an even 10 per starship in order to depart low Earth orbit, now we're at over 40 starship launches with full payload on board just to support these two objectives, and that doesn't accomplish any of the other goals SpaceX might have for Starship, such as deploying Starlink, which Elon has also said is so important that if Starship didn't start launching Starlink at a high flight rate within a year, then SpaceX is at a genuine risk of going bankrupt, and that was three years ago. 
Anyway, Elon had even more to say. He also wrote, if these landings go well, then the first crewed flights to Mars will be in four years. So if we do it once without crashing, then the next trip around is going to be loaded with some brave volunteers. Luckily for those eager to offer themselves up as tribute, those first landings would be highly unlikely to go well. That's not a knock against SpaceX or their ability to accomplish impossible goals. It's just an observation of their own history that seems to show they need to screw it up a few times before they eventually get it right, which is fine. That's totally normal product development, and I'm sure we'll hear from from Elon himself many times that success is far from certain. Here's the last bit of Elon's post. Flight rate will grow exponentially from there, with the goal of building a self-sustaining city in about 20 years. Being multiplanetary will vastly increase the probable lifespan of consciousness, as we will no longer have all of our eggs, literally and metabolically, on one planet. Of course, there's nothing new involved here. This is stuff we've heard Musk say many times before, but it's also the first time in a while he specifically laid out an up-to-date timeline. We know a lot more about the realities of Starship and spaceflight now than we did 10 years ago when Elon started talking about all this stuff, and clearly his level of confidence in Starship to deliver a lot of results in a short amount of time, it's just as high as ever. What do you think though? NASA has officially removed their escapade payload from the inaugural launch of the Blue Origin New Glenn rocket, and there's something weird going on here. The agency announced on September 6th that it will halt pre-launch preparations for the Twin Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers satellites. The spacecraft were scheduled to launch on the first flight of the New Glenn between October 13th and 21st from Cape Canaveral in Florida. The reasoning cited by NASA is all about timelines. If Escapade is going to launch in a month, then NASA needs to begin loading the spacecraft with hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide fuel right about now. But if they go ahead with the prep of the spacecraft, and then Blue Origin has to delay New Glenn for whatever reason, then NASA has to go through the process of detanking that spacecraft. An official statement from NASA reads, The decision was made to avoid significant cost, schedule, and technical challenges associated with potentially removing fuel from the spacecraft in the event of a launch delay, which could be caused by a number of factors. Of course, Blue Origin is still very confident that everything will go to plan and New Glenn will be fully prepared for launch in less than a month from now. We've seen Jeff Bezos doing the rounds in the media promoting Blue Origin and showing off their progress, mostly on the Everyday Astronaut channel. They didn't ask us if we wanted to collaborate, probably because we've said very mean things about Jeff in the past. Anyway, here's where things get weird though. Instead of trying to quickly shuffle to a different rocket provider, NASA says that they still want to launch Escapade on New Glenn. But now they're going to wait until September 2025 to do it. So in theory, that means that they're going to miss the home and transfer window by several months, meaning that Escapade won't be taking the shortest path between the two planets. So the trajectory of the mission will be pretty significantly changed from what it was originally intended to be. Not that this would be impossible. We've known all along that Escapade is severely undersized for the power and capability of New Glenn, so there's probably a decent amount of wiggle room in the flight trajectory. They may be behind schedule by a few months, but theoretically, New Glenn can just push harder and make up the difference. NASA spokesperson Sarah Fraser told Spacenews.com, quote, The window depends on the spacecraft and mission characteristics as well as the capabilities of the rocket. Blue Origin themselves released only a vague statement saying, We are supportive of NASA's decision to target the Escapade mission for no earlier than spring 2025 and look forward to the flight. The company said that the first flight of New Glenn will instead carry unspecified technology for its Blue Ring Orbital Transfer Vehicle, and Flight 1 will also serve as the certification launch for the Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. The Space Force certification was originally intended to be on the second flight of New Glenn, which was scheduled for December, but the company now says they'll move that launch up to November, with no further details provided. So first launch of New Glenn in October with the Blue Ring payload, second launch in November with an unspecified payload, and then another launch in the spring with Escapade. That's a lot of hype to live up to there. Will Blue come through? 
China's experimental reusable space plane returned to Earth on September 5th, completing its third orbital mission. Chinese state media issued a brief report to confirm the landing, but provided no images or information regarding the mission, or even the site of said landing. A statement from the report reads, Success of the experiment demonstrates the growing maturity of China's reusable spacecraft technologies, which will pave the way for more convenient and affordable round-trip methods for the peaceful use of space in the future. The space plane has been operating in low Earth orbit since being launched on a Long March 2F rocket for the third time last December. Probably not by coincidence, that event happened two weeks before the launch of America's X-37B space plane on a Falcon Heavy rocket. That also went to an undisclosed orbit. China's space plane is thought to be more or less a reproduction of the X-37B. All Chinese space plane missions have involved releasing a small satellite or object into orbit. The second and third missions have seen the spacecraft appear to conduct a rendezvous and proximity operations with the object it released. We're not sure what they're practicing for up there, but it could involve retrieving, repairing, and maintaining Chinese satellites, or potentially intercepting and screwing around with other nations' spacecraft. It's hard to say because China has maintained strict security around these missions. The country's space authorities haven't even released any official images or even a description of the spacecraft. 